Matt says, uh, a client has realized that they now need receipts that were emailed to a shared mailbox in 2023 for tax purposes, but they actively deleted them when received. So a couple of questions. If they've deleted them and now can't find anything th through searching Outlook, is there any likelihood that I can find something? Should I put a retention policy in place that stops anything being deleted ever? Thoughts of the collective welcomed. Yeah, because well, my, my first thought of this, Hal, I know that you got some other options here. I mean, generally it's, um, you know, if you're deleting things like this, um, I mean, I, I've got policies in place with my tenant where it, there's a life cycle on it. Like I, unless it's junk, just junk mail, I don't delete anything and let the life cycle management do that process so that I've got time and that it's, it's like, it's, it, it's kind of, I think of it this way, you know, when you're really angry and you write that angry email and you like over the weekend, you, you want to give it some time and go back and think about it. You might delete it. You might edit it and soften it a bit around that. I think with a lot of content, and this is just from my personal experience has been let the life cycle management, whether it's 30 days, 90 days, 12 months, whatever the cycle is to retain that. Cause I don't know if I'm going to need something, part of that conversation, one of those attachments, something around that. And so I let then the life cycle management go and clean that up and process that. If I've not moved it, if I've not tagged it, if not done anything with it, like 30 days later, it just gets cleaned out anyway. I don't know. If it's so a year ago. It, yeah, it I mean, depends entirely on how the way the, the exchange server is set up and whether he's not, he's done anything with it. As it stands under normal circumstances, you delete something, okay? It goes into your deleted items folder. It's going to live there for, oh, I don't know, 14 days, a month, something like that before Outlook is going to automatically move it into the <clears throat> permanently deleted items area, except permanently deleted is not really permanently deleted. It goes into the quote dumpster, end of quote. And that's the recoverable items area. And that is typically five or six months. So it just all depends on how long ago it was and where exactly it is that you've looked. If you, um, and, and you can get uh, better access to the dumpster well, at least it's equal access through, through the Exchange admin as you can through Outlook. In fact, I would prefer probably doing it through the Exchange admin because that way you can, um, and, and you can go in and with any with any luck, it might still they might still be in there. But they hang around for quite a while. Outlook is not real crazy about permanently deleting things ever. So well, that's the first place to go about uh, hunting for it. Uh, in addition to that, of course, is if you have the exchange admin, you can set the retention policy to be a good deal longer than uh, whatever is the default. And as I say, I think it's in months. Yeah. It, uh, the it, last time it, I checked. There's, a, there's another, it's a great reason to have like your governance policies documented somewhere, have it out in the FAQs, you know, have some place where people can go and look up, okay, what are the rules that, what are our policies around exchange? Um, because there might be, depending on your organization and the region that you're in, where you are in the world, there could be very strict compliance regulatory rules in place around how long things are retained. It could mean that it's, if it's not specifically flagged or marked, that it could delete quicker, it could be 14 days until it's moved off. It could be, you know, much longer, but then you're right doing the dumpster dive in there, you need the exchange admin to go and do that deeper discovery mm -hmm. and and retrieve those things. I mean, this, when the question was asked, it's only a couple months. So you'll likely still be able to retrieve that. I would think so. But without looking, you know, go, go, go yeah. look. And preferably the sooner, the better. Yeah. But that's it again another reason to understand the policies have it documented have it out there so then you're not left wondering hey do i even have options if you know mm -hmm. that hey it's held for 30 days before it's then and move the dumpster then it's held for three to six months in the dumpster here's the time period you know and what's the other answer for that you know anything around like receipts i mean i 
I have my receipts folders. So if I get emails, all those <laughs> things, I move it across because I know it's goes. I just it, have it a flow. I, to, I, it's, I use right. Power Automate. And Power Automate, all attachments, they all just go straight into, uh, you know, I have them. They automatically go into my OneDrive folder, but I've also got filtering on my automation where if it has the word, anything in the email that says receipts, statements, remittance, all those sorts of things, they automatically go over into my SharePoint into an accounting folder yep. for my bookkeeper. And then I don't have to worry about it. They're always backed up. Even if I've accidentally deleted an email, mind you, I've got my deleted items. I think last I looked was 2016. I never get rid of anything. Um, you know, it doesn't automatically delete them unless, as you say, you've got certain policies in place. But right. um, if it's not there and you can't get it, just who were they? Reach out and get it, get a new receipt. Might actually well, be quicker, frankly, than all of the hunting and searching and trying to find backing up. Yeah. Do you know what? I've had many times where I've gone, do you know what? It was two receipts. I'm spending so long just trying to find a way to get to whatever. Just reach out to them. They've got them in their systems because legally they have to. So, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, you, you don't know. If I see anything receipts, I mean, obviously I with the with our tax year and when the handling for that, if it's anything that could be applied to you know, tax write-off or something I need to be able to show or retain around that, you want to automate that so that mm. you've got them. I mean, generally that speaking, it's it's if you're not sure what your company's policies are, again, you can create the automation, you as an end user on for your exchange experience to handle it in a certain way. And then it, it, it moves it out of the way. It won't then be automatically deleted. These were, of course, these, the way I interpret that, Matt, was they were manually deleting those but yeah so you should be able to find those yeah but We're yes hopeful. i probably put something in place he says should i put something in Definitely. place like absolutely you yeah. should because people make mistakes right you know and then document what you found out and have it out there so that other people aren't confused by the same like what are our policies yeah yeah. Or that they know that nothing gets deleted ever. This is a business. There's a retention around everything. So don't email it if you don't want it in our system. <laughs> like that, I'm cranky email. <laughs> <clears throat> or don't go dumpster diving because you'll come out smelling not like roses. <laughs> <laughs>